Our next guest at the Business Today Most Powerful Women is far and away one of the most influential women leaders in our country. And it is an absolute delight and pleasure to welcome Roshni Nadar Malhotra. Can we have a warm round of applause, please? <laughs> Roshni, I was seeing you sit in the audience, look at this burst of entrepreneurial energy led by women. And I was thinking, what's going through your head when you see the likes of Ghazal Alag, Vinita, Masaba, uh, what are you thinking in terms of how they're shaking the notions of entrepreneurs being women and being as successful as they are? I mean, they're so inspirational to me. I was just so happy to hear their stories. Uh, um, I don't get to get out much or meet a lot of people. So I definitely was just loving hearing them. And I was just thinking that um, we have so many women in our workforce, women in our young women in our schools, in our universities, and you all must be such an inspiration for them. So it's awesome. There's been so much conversation today and in the weeks uh, leading up to this event about artificial intelligence and how AI is changing uh, workplaces at this moment and how it's changing our, our lives. Could you share with our audience here how you see the advent of the era of artificial intelligence change what you're doing at this? Well, I think that it's a great opportunity for us because... Um, it's going to not only lead to a lot of automation, but it's going to lead to a lot of different kind of skills. And I think uh, one thing that the tech industry does um, quite well is always looking at future technologies and future skills. And I think this one's coming faster than we can even blink. So, so, so what's your message to your teammates, your executives, in terms of how you're preparing? And what do you think are the lessons that people sitting here watching you at this moment can learn in terms of living at a time when machines are smarter than women and men? Well, I mean, we've always uh, lived with uh, technological uh, inflections, right? And we would have been having this similar conversations. Obviously, there was no social media when the calculators came and people thought they wouldn't be able to do math, but we've come through that. Then the internet came and we thought, oh my God, you know, now kids will be using the internet all the time and they're not going to be learning in schools. I think we've learned to work with it. So I think even with the advent of AI, there is, uh, it's still early stage for use cases, but at least in our industry, I'm sure there will be a lot of applications and opportunities around it perhaps a lot more of automation. But um, AI was built by humans. I think we'll be smarter than them and we'll figure out how to use it to our advantage. It's interesting the kind of passions that you have outside of work. And one of the things that I was tracking was your whole initiative towards aquapreneurs. Do you want to tell us about any successes you may have had, which is really to try and see how water can be better used and using technology to push that? And in the real world, are you being able to make an impact just at this moment? So um, just to give you guys a sense, um, we committed about 15 million in partnership with the World Economic Forum at their platform of Uplink to find uh, aquapreneurs, that's entrepreneurs working on fresh water from all over the world. And it's a five-year commitment. Uh, and each year, we fly, find 10 aquapreneurs. So this was the first year we rolled it out. We've got 10 aquapreneurs. In five years, we'll have 50. And um, some of the solutions um, which are coming out are around um, platforms and water credits, let's say in a Latin America, to actually um, water recycling innovations within buildings and infrastructure, and there are many other solutions. Um, I've met the aquapreneurs actually for the first time three days ago online. I hadn't met all of them yet, and because the UN Water Conference was going on, they had all gone to New York. So I'm hoping to get them to India later in the year and then pilot some of those solutions because I think we have to see what works in our context. And, and are you hoping for a breakthrough here in terms of being... because? Even in the last few days, there have been so many reports that have come out about how India is going to be the most water-stressed country in the world in the years to come. Uh, just 4% of the world's fresh water. And that just shows 
how desperately we need to find solutions and possibly using technology to power some of those solutions. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're looking at some of those solutions and I mean, I'm very hopeful because in five years we'll have 50 aquapreneurs from all over the world coming from um, countries which are water staffed, coming from countries which have good water but have a very good circular uh, water system. Uh, we've got an aquapreneur out of Singapore and Singapore has probably one of the best water management systems. So I'm looking forward to seeing what comes You have way. inherited one of the most complex jobs in this country. Complex also because of very high-tech industry and you're surrounded by male CEOs. What's the toughest situation that you think that you've been in and how did you learn uh, to adjust and adapt to that more? I mean, I grew up with one of the most brilliantly complex people. <laughs> so I think if anybody knows Shiv here. Um, so I think, uh, no, I s stand on the shoulders of giants and um, it's, uh, yeah, you take each day as it comes. You've, if you see a lot of the, while I was researching this session, I saw a lot of commentary where people are wondering, does Roshni enjoy what she does? Do you really like what you do? I mean, outside on, say, the habitat side, working conservation, uh, you really do enjoy what you do. Your, the, the main cut and thrust of your work, how much do you enjoy what you do? I love it, here. You do? I love it, here. It's okay. I think they're dying for a... I don't know why. They, they don't expect uh, men to emote. Why do they expect me to emote? It's, I mean... That's interesting. You know, but, I mean, why? It, it's a chair's job. It's a chair's job. It's not I'm man, woman. I'm just doing a job <laughs> and enjoying it. That's fantastic because does that put you under extra pressure? Do you feel constantly the pressure of A being compared, not just with your father, but with the peers in a very competitive industry? You know, uh, Rahul, I, where I stand is where I sit. And I'm sitting in the room with them. So let them be worried what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Where do you see yourself in the years to come? Your father built a great legacy. You're now shaping the present and the future of HCL. In what direction would you like to take it in keeping with what your dad built and your vision for HCL in the years? No, so I think, uh, of course, HCL has had um, its own... Um, it's been built over 45 years and uh, it's... We we've, we've have a strategic uh, direction which we want to take the company through differentiated products, services, um, you know, delivering uh, high TSR and more than a technology company when you've got 2.5 lakh people. You have, it's as much a people company and, um, you know, growing in the different geographies that we're growing. So um, it's, it's also a fairly mature company. So I think a lot of, uh, at least I can only say in the short and medium term, we have a strategic direction. We're going to stick to it. We're going to grow in a lot of other geographies, which we are. Over COVID, um, you know, I'd mentioned to you when we met in Davos as well, we've opened five new delivery centers. They're all actually outside India. I think that's going to grow as much. And then, you know, we embarked on the journey of software only in 2018. And... Uh, so that's a fledgling. It's almost like a startup within the HCL tech ecosystem. So that still has to mature, and that's what legs. How do you define your leadership style? What are the values that are most important for you in terms of what you try and imbibe in the organizational culture? I think, um, think decision-making, quick decision-making, um, and... Uh, uh, you know, given that the organization is also fairly complex now, I think it's also carrying people with you. And um, also for me personally, you know, uh, I've, I've, I've been at HCL since 2009. I've been on the board since 2013. Uh, you know, obviously always surrounded by people who are more experienced in their particular domain than I am. So I think constantly learning. And uh, like I said, I just take each but day as it comes. How complex is that? You're saying that A, people who are more experienced, B, who potentially think they know more, trying to navigate that kind of a situation. I always wonder 
how you are able to get by and get what you think uh, needs to be done at a time when there are people who think maybe they know better you know i've been chair for 3 years how's hcl tech doing not too bad so i think i'm i'm getting along moving along <laughs> yeah you know there was a time when you were training to be a journalist could you talk to us a bit about that because you were actually preparing for a job originally while growing up which wasn't necessarily uh, being and doing what you're doing at the moment you know rahul i have to give so much credit to my parents i mean my dad's a south indian my mom's a punjabi and you know he was always building hcl um, you know i don't have any siblings uh, he could have told me go and do engineering and at at an impressionable age i could have or i could have done science or whatever but he just said go do whatever you want and but whatever you do make a go at it and you're on your own so you know uh, so i liked communications and i liked journalism and media studies so that's what i did as an undergrad then um i worked with sky news as a news producer for a few years and and that was amazing it i think i really grew personally over there and then you know he just came to me and he said that you know roshni maybe you should do business school something normal and i was like okay i said you know again it's a new experience right and i still remember my first day at kellog the professor my statistics professor asked that who in this room has never used excel before and i was the only person who put my hand up because it was otherwise just consultants so there were people who'd come from investment banking or i had never used excel uh, so uh, but so i was um, so i think again i i think he, my parents style has been push in the deep ocean and then figure out what so i think each of each of the learning has been like that as well so punjabi mom very strongly south indian father are you more punjabi or south indian i'm an indian yeah <laughs> i'm an indian <laughs> which side which side's pulling you more towards itself uh i don't know i mean my husband's a punjabi so now i have to balance out the family so i think i'll say south indian <laughs> yeah okay in terms of uh, lessons for women entrepreneurs because we had uh, professor tarun kanna from the harvard business school one of the things he spoke about which left a mark on me is the fact that it isn't an equal opportunity game just the fact that it's easier for men whether it is from raising capital to setting up companies running them than it is for women to what extent do you think we've been able to overcome that and to what extent do you believe is more ground that yet needs to be covered so i think that uh, uh there's so so much amazing work that women are doing on their own and it's been said before uh, in the earlier sessions i was hearing as well of breaking those ceilings to become entrepreneurs but if i just look at um within the company also can women be given more opportunities to explore entrepreneurial ideas within let's say even an established organization which is navigating and negotiating with their managers getting their ideas through i mean we as an industry have a decent percentage of women when they enter the workforce and india today by sheer numbers is the largest producer of women stem graduates in the world you know so there are those many stem graduates and women coming into the workplace at least in tech but a lot of them are actually falling out by the time they reach the senior levels so i think creating an environment for um, them to come back into the workplace and saying that you know what when you come back you'll be promoted not that oh you'll come back and you'll actually go a step down is also creating entrepreneurial opportunities with them for existing organizations because you know one of the things that shiv used to tell me and he was a first generation entrepreneur he says that not everybody can be an entrepreneur it's very easy to say but not everybody is a successful entrepreneur men or women otherwise there'd be those many more but there are many amazing large organizations where people work so can you create entrepreneur entrepreneurial ecosystems within those organizations so that people can and you're trying to do that that when women come back after having babies and when the babies are a certain age that they can come back that you actually promote them rather than having them start from where they left off so uh, for example you know because of our industry going into the hybrid workspace at least um, 
what ended up happening was that the productivity amongst our women for workforce actually went much higher because till long time ago, flexible workplace was like, ooh, women ask for it. Now with hybrid and tech, it's everybody is flexible. Everybody wants to do, you know, and have time to themselves. So it's actually helped our women's workforce and um, we hope to bring back more and, you know, they should at least be at parity with their male colleagues and be given the chance to rise. I think that will strike a deep chord. Can we have a warm round of applause, please? More power to you and more power to women in the workforce and in the manner in which you're trying to get them into boards as well. So thank you so much for your time. Thank and you. Thank you.